Hi everyone, this is Kona, and we're going to go through the multiple linear regression mini-tab example. So first of all, we are data dictionary. We've got a response variable. Our y is IQ. Our predictor variable uh, is brain size, height in inches, and weight in pounds. So that's our data dictionary. Uh, our claim is that IQ is affected by a person's brain size, height, and weight. Okay. So the original claim is the alternative because we think uh, it is affected. If it was a null, it'd be it's not affected. Uh, but normally we are going to uh, go with the alternative. So in general, we just go ahead and use the alternative, but ultimately you can use is affected or is not affected. So the first step is to create a matrix plot in tab to see if any of the variables are related. So to do this, we're doing graph, matrix plot, simple, and then response. So. Here's our data, graph, matrix plot, simple. All right, so we went ahead, simple, response variable, um, and, and so we should be able to do OK. And there you go. So once we get this, and I'll go ahead and pull this up, all of this right here, that's just pretty much a duplicate of all of this up here. So I crossed all of this out because we don't really need it. What we're looking at is this data right here, but more what we're looking at is IQ, because you remember IQ is our response variable versus our three different predictors. So what this graph right here, this plot is, is IQ versus brain. This one is IQ versus height. And this one is IQ versus weight. So the first question is anything interesting going on? Well, in general, none of them seem to be super strong predictors. Um, so they don't seem to have a really strong relationship. Uh, if anything, to me, brain and IQ seems to have the strongest positive relationship. But height and IQ, yeah, maybe uh, weight and IQ just kind of looks kind of crazy. So which variables appear to be related? Well, to me, IQ and brain. Uh, there's no black and white here. This is just kind of gray. This is just kind of a your interpretation. Um, but you would want to include this graph, and you would want to include your interpretation. Next, we're going to analyze all of the data. So step three, analyze all of the data. So we're going to come back here. And then minimize this one. We're going to do stat, regression, regression fit regression model. So remember our response is IQ. Our predictors are all three of those. And for options, we don't really don't remember. I don't think we need any of these. So we're just going to go ahead and click OK. Yep, there we go. All right. So there is all of the data. You would want to include um, all of this in there. And so coming back over here, uh, I think I stopped at the regression equation. Um, but in general, you'd want to include um, this unusual one right there. So but back to this one. OK, so here's our output. And what are we looking at? So first of all, we're looking at the analysis of variance. So it's doing an ANOVA. And what you want to look at is the regression part. So this regression line, you're looking at that F value and this P value. Um, what else you want to include, though, for this particular test is the degrees of freedom. So the regression is testing whether all slope parameters are equal to 0. So this is kind of this is the test that you're testing this claim against right here. So. Uh, what that's showing is that F, and then we've got degrees of freedom, is 3, and then the air, which is 34, is equal to 4.74 with a p-value of 0 0.007. But this does not tell us that the model with the three predictors is the best model. So what this does tell us uh, is that there is enough evidence to support that IQ is affected by a person's brain size, height, and weight. So all this is doing is just saying that IQ is affected by these three things. But it's not telling us if this is the best model. Um, we can also look at this model summary. Uh, so we've got 23.27. Um, R squared adjusted takes into account the sample size, number of predictors, 
uh, we do want larger is better. So it will become smaller when you throw extra variables or data into the model that don't relate to the response variable. So we do want larger here. Um, we also are going to look at these coefficients, and actually we're looking at the t-values here. But we're looking at these coefficients, um, which relationship, positive or negative, the variable has with the response variable um, when the other x's are held consistent. So for this case, we're saying uh, brain has a positive relationship with IQ. Height actually has a negative relationship with IQ. And weight has a kind of positive, not really, uh, relationship. So if you look over here at p-value, it looks like brain and height do have um, the less than 0.05 p-values, uh, which are significant, and that weight doesn't. So it appears that weight really doesn't have that much to do with it. Uh, but what we're going to look at next is determining the best model. So this is really important. Um, and so what you need to do, so first of all, you want to make sure that you have a p-value um, that's less than 0.05 right up here in this analysis of variance. So you've got to make sure that one's less than 0.05. That's really important. So once you've got that, the next step is figuring out which one uh, of your different predictors, so in this case brain height or weight, actually should fit into your model. Because remember, this is all about modeling. We're trying to find out what's the best model um, to predict IQ. So determining the best model. It's by a couple of factors. It's more art than exact science, uh, but what's normally done is something called a stepwise process, where one variable is added or removed at a time from the model. Uh, each step, the p-value from the table of coefficients is compared to a predetermined cutoff, uh, usually around 0.05. If the p-value is less than that, it's added to the model. If it's larger, then it's removed. Um, yet you also have to take in consideration the adjusted r-square value. So the bigger the adjusted r-square, the better. Yet if it's a small decrease, that's okay, because ultimately, the fewer number of variables, the better the model is. So keep the variables with the small p-values in the table, but get rid of those with large p-values. Um, don't get rid of too many variables at once, so I would do one at a time. And ranking variables. So best predictor coefficient is the one with the smallest p-value or the largest, so ignore the sign test statistic. A small p-value means that there is little chance that the variable is not related, which basically just is a small p means there is a correlation and we should keep the variable. So eliminating variables, get rid of the largest coefficient p-value or the smallest test statistic first. Uh, don't include the constant. Uh, do this one at a time. Eliminating one variable may cause others to change, uh, so only do one at a time. You can usually just keep eliminating uh, variables that have p-values larger than 0.05, but you need to keep an eye on your adjusted r-squared. If it starts taking a big drop, then you might want to leave the extra variables in there. Uh, keeping variables when deciding which variables to keep, you want to keep the ones that are the most correlated. These are the ones with the smallest p-values or the largest test statistic. So first of all, we've got our model um, used. And so in this model, we're using the predictors of brain, weight, height, and weight. And where did these p-values come from? Right here. Those are the p-values right there. And there's the r-squared. So. Looking at this and looking at this r squared, well, this p-value is definitely the highest. So what we would do next is come back over here and just basically rerun this regression, except this time we would take off. So we do brain and height, but we didn't do weight. So just brain and height, click OK. And what we want to look at now is this r squared adjusted right there and the p-value for brain and height. All right, so what we would do on our table, and I would recommend doing this um, for your project and for everything else, is we've got brain and height, and there's our, adjust, our squared adjusted. So we want a higher R squared adjusted. So we do have, it went from 23 to 25, which is good. Uh, both of these are less than 0.05, but just to make sure that we should keep the height, what we're gonna do is try it with just brain alone. So in this case, we're just going to come back, regression, regression, and let's take off height and leave just brain. And when we do that, you can see uh, the p-value is 0.019 and the r-squared adjusted, um, and actually in this case, we're only looking at the r-squared. Uh, r-squared adjusted is when you have more than one 
uh, of your variables there. So it's actually the 14.27. So back here, our 14.27, um, that's because we only have one variable. We do adjusted when we have more than one of these variables. So by getting rid of height, we actually dropped our R squared adjusted. We want a high R squared adjusted. So obviously this isn't a good model. This one isn't that good because not only does weight have a high p-value, but also by dropping weight, we end up with a dropping weight. Haha, -ha. uh, we get a higher R squared adjusted. So in this case, this is what we want. We want the model with brain and height. So questions to answer about your final model. So once you have your final model, you want to include your data, your, your uh, mini tab output. So here's that mini tab output of the brain and height. And what you want to answer are first, are the predictor x variables significantly associated with the response y variable? So in this one, this is where you've got your f um, and then your 2, 35, because that's the error, is equal to 7.32 and a p-value of 0 0.002. So with this information, there is, because 0 0.002 is less than 0 0.05, enough evidence to support, because we're saying that uh, brain and height uh, that IQ is affected by brain and height. So we're supporting that IQ is affected by a person's brain size and height. How well does the model predictor variables explain the variation? And this is where we use our R squared adjusted. Uh, and this is where you say whether it's good, fair, whatever. So here a fair amount, 25.46 uh, of the variability in IQ is explained by the person's brain size and height. So with, then you go into number three. Uh, this is where we use the t-values and p-values of your, jeez, sorry, it's not constant in brain, it's actually brain and height. So this must have got shifted and I didn't shift it down. So this red box, ignore that red box, it actually comes down and it should be around brain and height. So uh, with a t-value of 3.77, which is your brain, and a p-value of 0 0.001, there is enough evidence to support that IQ is affected by a person's brain size. With a t-value of negative 2.75 uh, right here for height and a p-value of 0 0.009, there is enough evidence to support that IQ is affected by a person's height. Um, and what relationship does each predictor variable have with the response? So this is where you look at these coefficients. So you've got the negative or the positive brain coefficient of 2.061. And what that means is that when brain size increases, IQ increases. But for this height, you've got a negative 2.73. What that actually means is when height increases, IQ decreases, which seems kind of weird. Um, but it's implying height goes up. That's what this negative is. Uh, height goes up, IQ goes down. Or IQ goes up, height goes down. So it's kind of weird. Um, also, brain size increase, IQ in increases. That would also be brain size decreases, IQ decreases. Because remember, this is a positive relationship, which means they're both going in the same direction, either both up or both down. Um, this is a negative relationship, where if height goes up, IQ goes down. If height goes down, IQ goes up. So real world meaning. So when looking at if IQ is affected by a person's brain size, height, and weight, so you go back to all three of your variables, I found that brain size and height appear to, be slight, appear to slightly affect a person's IQ score. Brain size is positively related to IQ and height is negatively related. What this means is that the larger the brain, the higher the IQ, yet the taller the brain size, the higher the IQ, yet the taller the person, the lower the IQ. Um, weight does not, and this of course is generality. This is not 100%. Remember, because it's only slightly affects. Remember, it's only um, doing this 25.46 of the variability. Uh, so that's only a fair amount. So we're not talking like excellent. We're not talking the 80s or 90% of variability. Uh, we're talking about a very small percent of variability. So even though this does mean that, it's so small, it probably doesn't mean a whole lot um, other than weight definitely does not seem to have anything to do with IQ scores. So there's your real world meaning. Um, really important with the real world meaning. Don't talk about P values. Don't talk about F values, T values. Um, try to keep it as simple as possible, and in as real world, you know, if you were talking to someone who knew nothing about statistics, um, how would you explain it to them? That's kind of the real world meaning. So, I hope this helps, and uh, enjoy. Uh, personally, I love these, so these are some of my favorites.